now you're assuming your first shift as a first year resident or as a medical student or other uh, uh, clinician staff that typically work in the hospital, you first of all have to know the, the map of a hospital, know where the units are, know where you're supposed to report, find your team. We already described the different members of this team and obviously from there on you, you, you carry on your duties. There's, no, there's nothing you're doing for a patient without knowing why the patient is there. And in the world that we live in today, all of that is found typically in the electronic uh, medical records, in the EMR or the EHR, however you want to call it. You know, in some other places where they don't have that, you still have to dig into the papers. Uh, but typically, you find you, you do this on the computer. Now, before you go and talk to the patient, I, I think it's just just crucial to get some background before you go and talk to the patient so you're not there just you know mumbling and not really knowing what your purpose there is so ideally trying to find out what's going on with the patient starts with the computer you can actually call this computer rounds you can call it chart review so we'll talk about chart review all right so chart review and we're saying you're typically having to do this on the computer where do you go first I think it goes without saying that the first responsibility that you have as a clinician trying to you know, figure out what's going on with the patient is getting the story. And a lot of times the story is gotten from the chart. You go, if it's a new patient, for example, that just probably came in overnight and you have an ED note in there in the computer, you have like a H&P that talked about the admission, the history, and what's going on with the patient. That's always where to start from, get the story. A lot of times you're dealing with patients who've been you know, admitted to the hospital for a long time. You kind of have to play the catch-up game, but you don't have to sit there and look at every note from the first day since they were admitted. The ideal thing to do is to, for example, get the current, the most recent assessment of you know what's going on with the patient, get that down, and then go back to when they first came in the hospital, look at the H and P, and see what was happening there, and sort of kind of fill in the gap. You know, you see certain diagnoses that would require some cardiology evaluation. You go and look for the cardiology notes and see what their plan was and what they had recommended, and you fast forward and see was that ever done? Uh, what stage of that are we in is there was there any follow-up to that plan and you know what really is the plan now having looked at what they came in with and looking at what the current uh, 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 plan is so basically if you're looking at a patient that's been admitted for a long time you're trying to cut, do some interval story and that starts with looking at the most recent uh, uh, information most recent notes and then going back to look at what ha happened when they initially c came in and just fill in the gaps uh, in between. So you looked at the chart, you looked at the notes, whether it's a patient that probably came in overnight or there's whether there's one, two notes or a hundred notes, you've kind of gotten the story of the patient, uh, of what's happening with the patient. Now, you have to then say, at this moment, is this patient doing okay? And how do you do that? You look at the vitals. Before you go and talk to the patient, obviously, you look at the vital signs and make sure, you know, things are okay because that's things that change within the vitals are, tend to be acute. You know, you don't want to miss anything there uh, and not fix it when you have to fix it. You look at the vitals. Ideally, most places you'd have certain uh, notifications that come up, meaning if you're responsible for a patient and uh, a tech or a nurse finds out something wrong with the vitals, they're supposed to inform you immediately. But you're assuming that maybe skipped sometimes, depending on the situation, you want to make sure that this patient is hemodynamically stable, uh, 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 and if they're not, you have to take action, uh, uh, you know, expectedly so. So you looked at the notes, you go and look at the vitals, you get a sense of how they're doing in that particular time. The next thing you have to then do is look at the workup so far, because a lot of times it's not enough to say that this patient has this particular diagnosis you have to look for the evidence that says they have that because you know you, you want to account for errors that can happen from whoever might have seen the patient prior to you uh, but prior to you seeing them and you want to make sure that there is a, a, a sort of you know reinforcement of the integrity of the documentation so you see a particular assessment you go and look at the chart and say okay are we really dealing with this particular thing that you know is recorded that we're dealing with? And then whatever information you find there, you you're most likely not going to change anything. 
in terms of the assessment, but you're just reinforcing integrity, which is very, 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 very crucial in a hospital setting. This is in medicine in general, because at the end of the day, it's human life, right? And errors happen, but you don't want to be the one perpetuating those errors. You don't want to be the one just carrying the information, the wrong information along, and you're, you don't want to be the one that's just leaving things you know, to chance. For example, you come in, there's a particular diagnosis, right? And this particular diagnosis requires this specific management. But you go and look at the chart, for example, the workup, the labs, the, the imaging, that's supposed to prove that diagnosis, and you see something slightly different there that might require that you change the plan. You don't want to miss that. It's, it's not only important for, for the patient's safety, which is number one priority, but it's also important for your own you know, liability as well. For example, your license and all of that. It's just, it goes without saying that. When you see something written in a note that this is the assessment, part of doing due diligence is going to the labs, the workup, to confirm that that's in fact, you know, uh, the situations because you, you need to, you need to uh, account for errors that can happen. You know, everybody's prone to errors, but you don't want to be the one perpetuating that uh, uh, or even reinforcing that. Um, yeah, so it's important to do that. Once we talked about getting the story in the notes, making sure the patient is symptomatically stable, going to the labs and imaging, making sure that you're, you're looking at everything, just confirming whatever it is that is being said to be the assessment. One other very important thing to do, and this is very specific to the EHR you're using, um, most people use Epic, you know, Epic is widely known. I haven't really used much outside of Epic, but it's very important that when you're looking at labs and you're looking at workup, you want to look at it individually. So for example, you don't want to just click the all results portion and then look at everything. There's a chance you're going to miss like a lot of things, for example, that has happened before. So you want to look at things one step out to the other. For example, chemistry, uh, blood count, you know, uh, uh, blood gases, if it's there, you know, infectious, infectious uh, disease related stuff, urine, uh, imaging, x ray, and, and you're looking at it one at a time because that way you're able to see information, for example, from way back in the patient's hospitalization that's not just the most recent uh, information. So it's important to, to, to take note of that. So, some other very important things that you want to look out for, for, for example, would be, you know, input and output charting, for example. You're dealing with a patient who came in hypervolemic and you're trying to manage that. You want to look at the intake and output. You want to look at the urine output. Ideally, bowel movements and things like that are typically would be reported easily, you know, at the bedside. Uh, but you want to look at all of that as well. Um, once, you, once you're done with that, you, you really just have to then go and look at the orders because the orders is really where you fix things. Everything before there, you're gathering information. But really within the, in the orders is where you fix things. So we're, we're going to spend some time really talking about the different types of orders.